welcome to the aviation channel um so recently uh we've been doing a series on the Cessna 172 sp how to start it up um how to understand the instruments of the Cessna 172 sp and hopefully an explain mobile 10.6 um i'll carry on in this Cessna 172 SP series and I'll carry on the series probably forever but we're going to start a new series today and that is the Boeing 737 next generation uh, also known as the Boeing 737-800 and uh, Ryanair is sort of like full of these uh, airplanes they run purely on uh, currently Boeing 737 uh, next generation airplanes but um, today we're going to be in this uh, KLM Boeing 737-800 and uh, it's parked outside um, just outside the gate and uh, if we go inside we can see that this aircraft is in a cold and dark state so we're going to get the airplane uh, started up from the sort of cold and dark state and we're going to get the engines running and we will taxi to the runway so um i'm using a pmdg boeing 737 800 uh procedure and checklist but uh it's the same aircraft okay so it might be a different simulator but it is technically the same aircraft so um uh so let's uh without further ado let's uh, start off uh, with the checklist so um, first of all we want to turn on our dc battery so the dc battery is located over here we just want to turn it on and now you want to turn on your standby power okay uh, by putting it into the auto position um and now you want to turn on the left aft fuel pump so um this is the left aft fuel pump this is the center uh, and this is the right aft fuel pump uh just turn on the left okay um and now you just you want to start up the apu uh, and the APU is basically a, a mini engine in the aircraft. So technically this aircraft has something like um, at least uh, three engines. So as you can see the EGT is rising. And that third engine, believe it or not, so you've got your standard uh, two engines. Come on, if I can get into that view. There. So you've got your standard two engines on the left and the right. But if you look at that uh, back over there, there's two holes. Um, this is where the APU is located. So the APU is located at the back and it provides basic power to the aircraft uh, and allows you to mess around with some of the other switches so that you can actually start up the aircraft. So um, now the APU is on, we are going to be turning on the APU generator. So um, now you've turned on the APU generator, uh, we're going to turn on the APU bleeds. Okay, so we're going to turn on the APU bleeder. So there we've turned it on. And now you want to turn on, uh, well you want to arm the emergency exit light. So um, you just want to put it into the arm position. Uh, now it's armed. And you want to turn on your window heaters. So you just put them all in the on position and you can see four green on lights which uh, show that the window heat is on. So the cockpit windows are heating up so let's say it's been a very cold morning or very cold day um 
and the window seems like a bit foggy or a bit misty, then use the window heat. It's a bit like the window heat in your car, okay, with the sort of rare window in a car. So, um, now you turned on the window heaters. So, um, the recirculation fan, recirculation fan is, uh, I believe, located here. Uh, but sadly, um, it's it's not programmed in X Plane 10.5, so we need to see in future updates what X Plane Mobile does uh, do with uh, this aircraft. So, um, and the isolation valve is also not programmed in the game. Uh, we need the isolation valve in the auto position, but anyway, it's in the auto position already. Um, so now you want the packs to be in the auto position again, those haven't been programmed, but it's not much of a biggie. Uh, they're already in the auto position. Um, now you want the engine hydraulic pumps on, and the engine hydraulic pump pumps are. Frankly, they've been programmed in the game, uh, so just turn it on and the engine hydraulic pumps are on. So now you want to check that you've got sufficient uh, quantity of fuel for your flight and I've got plenty of fuel. So I've got about, um, about 22.7 tons of fuel. Um, don't know if I got my units right, but uh, as you can see on the bottom right of uh, the screen here, uh, I don't know what the Boeing uh, call them. I know the Airbus call the center screens, the ECAM displays. So, um, but yeah. Um, but anyway, we've checked out. Fuel is loaded and you want to... Uh, put the position lights in the steady position. So position strobe and steady. Just put in the steady position. And now uh, the light is ready. So the position strobe and steady light is ready. Um, and now, okay. Um, now you want to turn on the logo light. And... Uh, we won't need to worry about the cabin lights. Uh, you want to turn on the seatbelt sign. And seatbelt sign is just over there. I'll put it in the auto position. And I believe uh, what happens if you, uh, put, if you put the seatbelt sign in the auto position, uh, I believe the aircraft will automatically turn off the seatbelt sign once the aircraft reaches an altitude of above 10,000 feet. Or is that cruising altitude i believe uh, i'm not completely sure but uh, we've put in the auto position you can put in the on position if you want and uh the iris mode selectors that haven't been that hasn't been programmed but the iris mode selectors uh will be let's just get over here there so the iris the bloody hell okay so the iris mode selectors would be over here um that hasn't been programmed sadly in the game but it's already in the nav position so we are we won't have much to worry so um so i'm just uh following my checklist i'm just seeing where i am in the checklist and the fmc um, X Plane 10 Mobile 10, uh, X Plane Mobile 10.6 will include a functioning FMC system in the McDonnell Douglas MD80 and the Cessna 172 SP. But not in the next update, um, the Boeing 737 800, well, it's gonna get a working FMC system, um, in many other future updates. Um, so, uh, we want the stabilizer trim to be adjusted. I believe this is the stabilizer trim. Yes, it is. 
Um, the, it's been adjusted there. Okay, cool. So, um, we want the comm radios to be set. Um, so basically, uh, you you want to sort of tune into a traffic controller, a controller's uh, I'll put in the mouth frequency. I'll just tune into this uh, VOR station. Gosh, this is irritating me. There. Um, I mean, of course, you can manually change the nav frequencies and the com frequencies. Um, uh, you, you can change that over here. Okay, um, let's just um, move on with the checklist. So the flight deck doors are locked. You can confirm over here. It hasn't been programmed in the game again. But it will be over here. And uh, you want the gear pin to be in the cockpit. As you can see, that red thing here, that gear pin, is definitely in the cockpit. So you want to make sure that the gear pin is in the cockpit. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that red thing uh, over here okay, um, is the gear pin. Who knows? Um, so now we've uh, done our pre-flight checklist. Now we're going to do our clearance checklist. So uh, we've got quite a lot of our checklist. So we only finished uh, from the checklist. Uh, and in fact, uh, if you uh, want to, uh, if you want uh, the checklist, uh, just uh, check in the link uh, and the so description below, and you will find the checklist for how to start up the Boeing seven three seven eight hundred. Um, it is a, a PMDG simulator checklist but again it won't be much of a problem uh because this is a boeing 737 800 the pmdg simulator of the boeing 737 800 on see they're using the same aircraft and uh, if they're using the same aircraft it won't be much of a problem um so now we uh, so we finish our pre-flight checklist now we go on to our clearance checklist so our transponder code has will be set um, it's already set uh, in, onto the standard transponder code on 1200 let me just zoom in here so 1200 if you can see here um, so you just want to set um, and you want the transponder to be on standby mode. Okay, if I can read clearly, um, doesn't look like standby mode. Don't worry. Okay. Let's just move this for to here. Um, yeah, that looks like standby mode. Um, there. Um, so our transponder is on standby. We want the speed to be set. So you can set the speed over here. Um, okay, so, uh, so just set the speed and the heading takeoff runway. So heading takeoff runway. So if we're planning to leave a runway, um, a runway sixteen L, we're going to be uh, having our heading on one six zero, approximately. So about one six zero. 
Okay, approximately. Um, so now we want um, to put an initial altitude. So about, I would say, since this is going to be probably a short flight actually, from here all the way to here. I will not going to do this flight today, but uh, in future videos I will do a flight, uh, a longer flight. In the Boeing 800 So um, let's just go to a bit that much more lower. A very short flight. Talking about three thousand feet. Okay, that will be my altitude. Very low, I know, but uh, three thousand feet. I think that would be a great altitude. Um, so um, so we've. I uh, say our initial altitude. Now we just want to turn on our yaw damper. So basically, when we, uh, like, well, not steer the aircraft. Uh, if we, when we, actually, turn the aircraft, and and uh, put our aircraft in a sort of bank angle, uh, it won't really turn much, uh, because you need the rudder. To so like actually make the aircraft turn. So I can't make the rudder move. I need to actually properly start the aircraft. If I need to turn on the is AP on? Yes, the AP is on. Apparently. But um anyway, um in order to actually turn an aircraft you need uh to use both rudder and ailerons. Um and your cruise altitude um so your cruise altitude we pretty much hit that um yeah we say our cruise altitude uh landing altitude landing out oh flight altitude uh, about three thousand feet and landing altitude I'm going to say it's about, let's say, 3,000 feet. Okay. Um, flight directors, you want them both on. Okay. And you want your minimums to be set. I don't mean to mess up with that. Uh, is it this one? Yeah, it is this one. Just want to set up your minimums. So over here. So let's say it is foggy. Uh, this will be very useful. But uh, as you can see, it's a it's a very nice sunny day. But still, I believe by law you need to put in your minimums. So that you can re somehow reduce the chances of you having a crash. I mean, I can understand on a foggy day, but on a bright, nice, sunny day. Um, what can I say? So, um, now we've got both flight directors on this one. And on the co-pilot side, we want to... So we've done our minimums reference, so we set that, and our tempters, um, yeah, we've got our tempters set. Um, and now we follow the clearance checklist. Now we've got the before start checklist and then the start up checklist, and we will uh, complete the after start checklist, and we will. Um, we won't go as far as the before takeoff checklist, so um, we just taxi to the runway. Simple as that. So you want to turn on some of the lights, for example. You want to turn on your anti-collision lights. Um, now you want to, what would you want to do? Um, okay, fuel pumps. Uh, you want to turn on your fuel pumps. 
Uh, all of them. You want them all on. Um, and then the sea fuel pump. What's the sea fuel pump? Isn't that one? Oh, I'm sorry, everyone. Um, I don't know what sea fuel pump is. And actually, I do know what sea pump is. Sea fuel pump is. It's the center fuel pump, apparently. So C stands for center. Um, and it says C fuel pumps as required. And I'll just have it on. But I don't need it on. I can have it off. So uh, I'll just have it on anyway. Uh, and I won't need the crossfeed valve. And um, right now, um, electric hydraulic pumps. I want to turn that on. So uh, electric hydraulic pumps just over here. And parking brake. You want to confirm actually right from the beginning that is on so this is the parking brake off this is the parking brake on um so now you want the auto throttle to be armed whatever that means and you want the ground crew clearance that got received uh, you want your packs off. I can't do that actually in the game. Uh, recirculation fan. I can't do that in the game. And now uh, the engine to start switch. Um, you want it on ground mode. Since you're on the ground. And um, as you can see. This is going to be very exciting. We're starting up the engine. And oh yeah I forgot to say. We're currently... Not on the before start checklist, we're on the startup checklist. So we want this rising number, um, this N2 number to be about 25 and then we'll put up uh, a lever. So we'll put this up once it gets to about 25. And what I mean by 25 is 25%. So, um, oh, it's okay. There, as you can see, the engine is powering up. And if you look at the right engine compared to the left engine, you can see the right engine is starting up, which is very exciting, like extremely exciting. Okay, it's um, almost somewhat leveled off. Um, so engine to start lever, you want it on idle. Okay, so in the idle position. Confirm that. Um, I'm just moving to the next page of my checklist. So um, right now, you want, you want to put... Uh, so you want engine 2 to be stabilized Okay, stabilized and uh, You want to put engine starter 1 on ground mode you want to do the same thing that I've done to engine 2 so let n2 um, So let the engine number 1 to uh, have its N2 to spool up to 25% So just uh, wait for it to go to about 25 And then we'll put engine 1 start lever on idle I might as well do about 20 or 23 Okay the engine one starting up. The okay, engine one is starting up. And right now, uh, so um, let's remove the master caution. We won't 
really need to care about that master caution. So engine one has not stabilized. We'll wait for it to get about um, 480 because at that point it would have stabilized 487, 486, 485. Anyway, uh, it's almost stabilized. And now let's go on the after start checklist. And we will go on to the runway, uh, runway 16L. Uh, and I'm also using an airport diagram of the airport I'm in. And just in case you don't know, I am at Kilo Sierra Echo Alpha, which is also known as Seattle Tacoma International Airport, uh, which is, of course, in the USA. So uh, just let you know that Boeing airplanes are made in, I'm pretty sure it's made in Seattle. So, um, yeah, basically. So uh, anyway, um, we want to check our control is free of movement. So let's move right, left, right, okay, forward, uh, well backward and then forward. Okay, it's free of movement. And you want generator 1 and 2 to be on. So generator 1 and generator 2. So now it's on. Um, and you want the packs to be on auto that hasn't been programmed in the game. We say here's some fun. Okay, AP bleeder. You want the uh, AP bleeder to be off. So uh, AP bleeder. That's an engine bleeder. Gosh. AP bleeder. Um, and where's the... Um, oh, yeah. Why don't you... I should have done this from the very start. Put up the brightness of my instruments. Okay. There. Looks much more colourful like that. They're making everything look bright and nice. Um, so um, now uh, you want to turn... So we've turned off our AP bleeder. Now you want to turn off the AP generator. Um, there, we've turned off our AP generator. And you want to turn off the APU. Okay, EGT is decreasing. Okay, um, and you want uh, the engine start switches. So the engine start is to be in the continuous position. There, in the continuous position or in the cont position. Um, and you want the lower D to be of uh, auto brake to be in the RTO position. Um, you want taxi lights on. So taxi lights, they're on. Um, and basically, I'm just seeing where I'm in the checklist. Oh, you've almost finished the checklist. So you want the runway taxi light to be on. Wait, that's not it. That's runway turn off. I don't know where the runway taxi light is. Um, I'm sure this is. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is the runway taxi light. But um, you want to set the flaps, so I'm going to set it to about 10. Um, and recall checked. So um, wing anti-ice are required. We won't need wing anti-ice. Engine anti-ice. Um, we won't need the probe heat 
make sure that the probe heat is on. So make sure that the probe heat is on and you might want to turn off the window heaters. We won't need the window heaters. And we are ready to depart. Okay, this is going to be very exciting. Uh, in x 10 Mobile, uh, x 10.5, currently, um, let me just, okay, uh, we, we, we don't have any vehicles that actually push the aircraft back, so we have to use the thrust reverser to actually move the aircraft back. Um, I mean, surprisingly enough, um, this is um, something that's existent in real life. In fact, the Airbus A380 has the ability to actually... Okay. In fact, the Airbus A380 uh, is able to reverse uh, without having a truck or anything like that, uh, pushing the aircraft back. And uh, it's amazing. So um, let me just see where I am. Okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to want to maintain about 25 knots. But I don't want to go too fast. I think I'm going too fast. Uh, as you can see, if I can get in here, my grand speed is shown over here. As you can see, if you can see the number 29, that is my grand speed. Now it's 28. Still feel like I'm going quite fast. So we want to get ready at runway 16L. So currently we are at taxiway Bravo. Uh, we're going to go on to... Should I get on to Julia or should I go on to Delta or Charlie? Delta and Charlie is at the back. And then we're going to take off at runway 16L. Well, we won't take off, actually. That should be in a future uh, episode. So, um... In fact... Um... Let me just see where I am. Control tower. There. This is Taxiway Julia. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's Taxiway Julia. I'm gonna go into this then. Uh, the one next is Taxiway. I'm going quite fast. Because this is like a big plane, it's like steering a, a big bus very hard at like 30 miles per hour. Imagine that. So we're just gonna get our plane ready for takeoff. Go so doing our ground speed is 11 knots. Okay. There we are. So, thank you very much 
for listening to the aviation channel uh please subscribe to this youtube channel uh and like this video if you liked of course um and please watch my other videos and watch my Cessna 172 SP video and in a week or two uh, I'm hoping to see X-Play Mobile 10.6 and I'll do a review on the McDonnell Douglas MD80 so uh, again thank you very much for listening and I will see you again on the aviation channel